Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Oprah Pavarian and this is number 73 of the CK3 Dev Diaries. This one is interesting, but it is nothing that really throws me off my guard. This one is quite straightforward. It is about serving on Her Majesty's Court, which of course is about minor court titles. Now, the court positions, and this is the really good news from this Dev Diary, they will be included in the free version. Why is this so important? Why is this so good? It basically means that any mods that you may love, be it a Game of Thrones, be it Elder Kings, be it whatever else there out is, uh, is out there, for example, got Herja and so on, can use these court positions and not worry that most of the players won't have the DLC. Meaning that this is available and it seems to be incredibly moddable. So let's just jump into it. Court positions, which can be seen as an evolution of CK2's minor titles with a number of new improvements. While the old feature from CK2 had all sorts of various honorary titles, we wanted to focus on the most important positions at your court, jobs that are relevant directly to you as a ruler or that of your court. Most positions imply that the appointed character has an actual job at your court and provides you with their services. That doesn't mean we haven't added any of the classical honorary positions though. Expect to, uh, expect to also be able to appoint a master of the hunt, master of the horse, or if you're playing as England, a keeper of the swans. So this is very important to me as well. Well, again, very much expected. This is what I expected when it comes to the bar that they would have to cross with this. In CK2, it was all driven basically just, honestly, most people ignored it. Let's just be straightforward here. But uh, in CK2, it was essentially driven by you simply getting some positive opinion. Uh, in the case of the Court Chester, for example, some negative opinion. But in this case, it has become more influential in the sense that they actually do things. And, you know, that can be with grandeur or grandeur related if you have the Royal Court DLC. Or it can just simply be something that, you know, such as development, uh, development 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 level increase uh, that you know can aid you in your regular uh, well, affairs basically as a ruler. I think that this is, uh, this is very important. Otherwise, the royal court and, or rather, these court positions would be so trivial that I would be very unhappy about them. I remember when uh, before this game came out, we were talking about this a lot. Actually, features such as this one not making it into CK3, and back then my opinion was I'm okay with this if we get something that then significantly increases the quality. And I think this is what these court positions needed. Each position will provide you with a set of bonuses, mostly in the forms of various modifiers, but certain positions have more interesting benefits as well. For example, a court tutor increases the chances for children at your court to re uh, receive a better education trade. Their skills and traits have a significant impact on how good they uh, are at their job. This is reflected in their aptitude. A position uses one or several skills, such as learning for a court physician, which is the main factor for what aptitude a character will have. Each position also has a number of traits that may increase or even decrease their aptitude further. Aptitude is measured on a scale in five steps, ranging from terrible to excellent. The higher the aptitude is, the greater the benefit. Let's look Look at the Seneschal as an example. A character with the lowest aptitude will only grant you a control, a control growth bonus of 0.1, while a character with the highest possible aptitude will give you 0.5. Here we have Bermudo Fernandez de Leon, uh, 16 years old, a court here, excellent aptitude, and that is because they have a stewardship skill of 19, which reflects itself in 47.5. I don't even know what, what, what is this calculation here, it's like times 2.5 or something. And then Overseer right here is uh, another plus 20, which is of course rather significant, the Overseer right there. So that can actually play into that. And I do want to point out that Overseer does not come from the uh, stewardship tree. So this is essentially something that actually goes even a bit further. It says, okay, you are of course somebody that is in stewardship, but we can enhance this with a military focus tree, which in this case is the Overseer. Uh, just in general, I do think that this is uh, rather good. Uh, because for starters, of course, we do have an effect here. We do have uh, an opinion, I assume, because we do pay them. We pay these characters, so they likely will gain opinion boosts. But most importantly, it actually makes it so that you want these positions to be filled and then need to take care of those characters, further adding, of course, when it comes to court intrigue, as we will see in a second. Unlike CK2, hiring a character for a position is actually going to cost you, as each uh, court position has an associated salary that you will be paying for out of your own pocket. While the salary for any given position won't be very expensive, they will stack up. You will have, uh, you will have have to make a decision on how much gold you're willing to spend on all of your appointed positions and if the characters you have available are skilled enough to warrant the salary. We've gone through several old events to make sure that if you have someone appointed in a relevant position they can appear to provide extra options or affect an outcome to be more favorable. Additionally, some positions may appear in events related to schemes. We've also added cultural traditions that increase the aptitude of specific positions for characters of that culture or even unlock a position that you would normally not have access to. The goal is to make sure that court positions feel like an integral part of the game 
and to have them feel as immersive as possible. So this was definitely, again, as I brought it up earlier, this was the main problem with court positions and minor titles in CK2. In CK2, you paid for them, they gave you, I, I mean, rather, you handed them out, they gave you uh, some opinion boosts, and that is effectively it. You were looking at something that was really worthless. I know most people either didn't use them or effectively abused them just so that they could, you know, in very specific circumstances, for example, uh, get a marriage, get a non-aggression pact, for example, uh, also get people to actually not join factions and so on and so forth. Now, that has an effect, but all of these things can be addressed much more, you know, efficiently in CK2 by other actions. So this was basically something that nobody really paid any mind to. In CK3, that is going to change. They will be involved in events in schemes, they will give you general bonuses, of course they will be paid money, with which that, uh, they can also do things, and even cultural traditions will be involved. Again, this is essentially what I was uh, looking forward to. I think that this exactly meets the bar of where I wanted CK3 to go with these titles, because we're looking at a situation where all of a sudden that becomes relevant and you want to take care of it. You have to take care of it as you go. The code position has been updated to be a fully fledged code position and makes use of the new system. As you'd expect, the appointed character will take care of the sick people within your court. Court physicians have a lower salary than most, so you should in practice always be able to afford one. If you have the Royal Court expansion, having a court physician also provides you with a small bonus to your grander. A skilled phys a physician was often seen as a very prestigious thing after all. Here we have Sancha. Um, let's take a look at this. Average aptitude, Sancha, written by... <laughs> My little finger, don't worry about it. Okay, it's a bad joke. <laughs> court Grander base plus one monthly court Grander change plus 15%. That is rather significant for 0.15 per month. And then performs medical treatments and most importantly to me, powerful agent in hostile schemes against you. I'm really interested how this changes. This most certainly, I mean, you're going to see it in a couple of times here uh, below as well. This most certainly buffs entry quite a bit, I would argue, and hopefully makes it more interesting because this means that uh, right now, I know that one of the effective matters that people have fallen into is essentially to say, I simply have like four or five heathens in my prison. I will execute them once I uh, inherit as my heir and he will immediately have 100 uh, dread. And that, of course, is incredibly overpowered because at that point nobody wants to resist open you against you anymore and, you know, they will have to look into schemes and that will now be easier if your people in your court genuinely do not like you because in that case, of course, there would always be an easy ally. Uh, I believe the court physician already counts as a very uh, powerful agent in hostile schemes but and, of course, the spy master does but this makes even more characters into characters that sort of nerf the strategy of maximum dread. Next is the bodyguard. You can hire up to two bodyguards at the same time. Bodyguards don't provide any mass passive modifiers like most other positions, but do have two pa uh, fairly powerful bonuses. They have a chance to prevent assassination attempts on you, and they reduce the risk of participating in battles as long as both of you are partaking in the same battle. So make sure that our bodyguards, uh, your bodyguards, have been appointed as your knights to make the most use of them. But beware, bodyguards are very powerful agents, and should, should they join a scheme against you, keep an eye on their opinion to avoid any backstabbing shenanigans. Has a chance to prevent assassinations and reduces your risk to die or be captured in battles you've been fighting in. And uh, you can see this is a uh, more than four times the value that you have to spend for a court physician. Doesn't give you grander to be fair, but Rodrigo here can definitely save you. Now, I will say, uh, when it comes to reducing the risk to die or be captured in battles, I just be honest with you, I think that chance is already really, really low. Um, in this case, I'm not sure how beneficial the bodyguards sincerely will be. That is definitely something that uh, we will have to see in gameplay. Right now, I'm not that... Uh, you know, interested in the position primarily because, again, there are no battlefield duels if you are just one of the commanders. For the player, I actually believe there are never battlefield duels, so at most it essentially comes down to you getting the incredibly rare event to be hurt as a commander or the incredibly rare event to actually be captured if you lose a battle, which I'll be honest with you, if you're losing battles, then <laughs> what are you doing? Another interesting position is the food taster. Any self-respecting and perhaps paranoid ruler should have one. A food taster not only gives you some protection against hostile schemes, they may even prevent a poison-related murder attempt against you by, of course, eating your food and dying in your place. Just like a bodyguard, a food taster is also a powerful agent should they join in on a scheme against you. So there is court grander base in here as well. There's enemy hostile ch uh, scheme success chance minus 4%. Honestly, minus 4 is not that large. And chance of stopping poison themed murder plots against you, that is where the big news comes in, of course. You will lose weight more quickly. I, I like that, as actually. You will lose weight more quickly. That is an interesting modifier there, for sure. Let's take a look at the court gardener. This uh, court position is unlocked by a cultural tradition. Garden 
Garden Architects. Gardeners provide a passive opinion bonus for your courtiers and guests, who doesn't ap appreciate a well-tended garden, and depending on their skill, a significant bonus to the development growth in your realm capital. Now, court gardeners, very interesting. Cost the, the same, actually, as the bodyguard. Uh, the food tastes are fairly cheap, I suppose. I mean, they will just die, right? That is their, that is their task. Uh, courtier and guest opinion plus 10, that is with average, or rather, I believe this might always be the same. Yeah, it looks like uh, only development growth is actually impacted here by the uh, average skill. This is development growth and realm capital plus 0.4 for an average person. So let's assume maybe plus 0.8 for somebody that is excellent. That would be really good. Plus 0.8 per month is incredible. Uh, if you're building it up with a steward anyway, if you are going really hard into that direction with your buildings, this is a buff to building toll, no doubt about it. And for reference, this is what the tradition looks like. Garden architects, rulers can construct the royal garden's duchy building, can appoint the court gardener court position and gain a decision to recruit ca uh, characters with a gardener trade. This culture has a long tradition of constructing and maintaining various types of gardens, building themselves a, a, a small paradise. That's pretty neat, pretty neat. I do, I, I will say, um, I think this system, again, it meets exactly what I thought should be uh, the system anyway, the minor title system, right? So this is a good implementation, without a doubt, a good implementation. But when I look at this sort of thing, a gardener won't excite me, right? A, a gardener won't be the thing that I will jump out of my chair for. But I will tell you, when it comes to, uh, you know, even Game of Thrones, uh, all these minor titles that you could have there, and they will now actually be impactful, will now actually be focused, and will be different depending on your culture. I do think that that will be a pretty good implementation. It will also be a topic of the dev response in just a second once we finish this dev diary, because of course, how modable they are does come up. Finally, we couldn't show off court positions without showing the court jester, complete with the jester's outfit. Average aptitude, uh, court grander base plus one, monthly court grander change plus 15%, and possibility for stress relieving events. Thank you, Fernando. And then, <laughs> just look at this dude. Just look at this dude. I like this outfit. This outfit is really good. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan. <laughs> they will always get me with this sort of stuff. I, I do hope that we will be looking eventually at, uh, you know, a topic of a bit of animations, of course, that is a big focus here that they have. But yeah, all in all, when it comes to the dev diary itself, I'm happy with it. Am I blown away? No, of course not. But to be fair, these are core titles. So this is most certainly a straight improvement, a significant improvement from CK2, but nothing that really rips me out of my chair. Now, let's move on to the dev response. Alright, so here we are, let's check it out. Sevancourt said uh, that the number of bodyguards is of course moddable. We haven't made any major changes to agents and their willingness to join. That is in reference to the fact that of course these people are now much more influential and, you know, maybe if they join you will have basically instant successes, but that is something we'll have to keep an eye on. So yeah, let's just see how that comes out. I do hope, fingers crossed, that we don't just see a world revolution basically in pure intrigue gameplay, although that would be interesting. I have a very warfare-oriented playstyle, no doubt. Uh, are court positions moddable? Of course they should be very moddable and you can add new positions or change the effects of existing positions very easily. The overall modability should be fairly high. This is very interesting, of course, because when you have mods that introduce new resources, uh, Way of Kings, of course, as well, I mean, so many do that, uh, where, for example, magic plays a role where you come in and you need this resource, and so far they primarily do it via a role of a uh, in, in as a court mage, but you could even expand on this, you can make it even larger, you could make a, just an educator exclusively for magic, that sort of stuff, and I feel that that is something that requires to be moddable, and it appears to be moddable. Um, can you appoint vassals or just courtiers, uh, courtiers to these positions? Would appointing a vassal as court jester decrease the opinion of you did that in CK2, of course? Depends on the position. Some positions only allow landless characters to be appointed, while other may allow only landed characters, or both. Yes, appointing a vassal as your jester is a sure way to make them feel insulted. Makes sense. Will there be a court poet? Will tribes and dukes have access to these positions, even if they don't have a court. We do have a court poet, yes. Court positions are available to everyone. I do want to point out, court positions are not directly related, at least most of them are not directly related from what we know to the royal court system itself, because this is part of the free update. They are integrated, of course, into the royal court, but beyond that, they exist as they are. Court positions are available to everyone, regardless of government type or tier, but the actual positions you have access to may vary. As mentioned in the DD, some positions are unlocked by cultural traditions, others by a king, or being a king or emperor etc. Uh, physicians ought to be paid fairly well, so this is on the topic why the physician is so cheap. Uh, they ought to be, fa be paid fairly well in a realistic context, but gameplay trumps uh, reality here. We want all rulers to have a viable chance at being able to afford a physician despite having a low income. 
checks out. Honestly, I, I get that. Um, right now, I don't believe the AI hires code physicians to begin with, unless somebody gets sick, so via the event, but on their own, they never do it, and that, of course, leads to a bunch of them dying for no reason whatsoever. So, yeah, no, I, I completely, I personally believe that this is a, a good choice to make it so that both the AI and the player can go forward with the code physician. Uh, any chance we will get the region position, too? Not this time. Regions is still something you want to look into in the future, though. So, this one is... I want to phrase it as interesting, and what I mean by that is that similar to how minor positions was, were done in CK2, I was not a fan of Regencies in CK2. Mind you, again, I do not say here, I don't want Regents. I want Regents in CK3, 100%. But the way Regencies were done in that game, and as they were done in most games, is essentially you now having to wait and that's it. Um, there aren't really any inter uh, inter uh, interesting interactions there. There are some random events where you're uh, regions uh, can take stuff from you, but you as a region can never actually do that. It is something that is really just not a fleshed out mechanic. Um, I would like to see regions, but that most certainly needs to have more involvement than, well, basically just, you know, a minor title that does a couple of things, but regions should be, you know, you are in control of the realm, they should be much, much further with what they can do, in what sort of pool they take uh, from what their options are, and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's not going to come here, I hope that it will be coming in the future. Uh, does this mean, uh, mean that there are title-specific positions? Do the electors of the HRE have a special position too? That actually is such a really good comment. I want to I wanna say, I can't even read the name. MFR707. That is a really good point. Uh, the electors currently aren't really featured at all. And electors, I'll just say it outright as well. The HRE, and that comes down to feudalism as a whole, but at that point we have to critique CK3 in a very wide range. Um, the electors were not set in stone like that. It didn't fundamentally work like that. It was a difficult institution. The HRE as a whole was a very a novum. It was something that hadn't been done before, you know, that was incredibly uh, novel and that came with a lot of challenges. And none of that is really depicted because the electors are essentially just assumed to exist. You know, if you hold that title, then you will be an elector. That's just the way it is. And that's not necessarily how it was. Uh, I wish it would become more dynamic that, for example, if you had a special position, a special court title for the electors, that you would be in a position to withdraw them, to hand them out again, to be in a position where you could challenge somebody else for their position, where you could absorb someone and then, you know, uh, claim against your liege that you deserve this title and so on and so forth. That would be excellent. Yeah, right now is Keeper of the Swans is the, on uh, Swans is the only title-specific position we have at the moment. Sad news. I, I will say it. Does salary scale with aptitude could be an interesting way to allow lower level rulers to afford those positions but at a lower quality it does not we do not have some uh, we do have some general scaling to keep the cost relevant in the mid to late game but scaling it with aptitude or as someone else suggested with rank is certainly one way to make the cost a bit more dynamic the cost is a work in progress and subject to change so it's something we might look into uh, yeah, I mean, that's a uh, day-to-day balancing. It's good that, th that they think about it, though. I don't recall all of the events we have for the court jester at the top of my head, but I am sure we have at least some cases where this might happen. So, you know, so, uh, the court jester mocking someone with satire. If the people get appointed, uh, if the player gets appointed to one of these positions, do they get paid their salary? And if so, does that stay true for multiplayer if another player has appointed you? Yes, in uh, it stays true even in multiplayer. I really wish, again, that there were some interactions that you can kickstart either as the player that appoints people or as the player that, you know, is appointed. But yeah, it doesn't appear that way. Uh, Oxycoon also answered some questions. Thank you, Oxycoon. They are extremely moddable, so the positions. I give warnings, though, that modding the AI for court positions is not an easy task. I hope that this is doable. For the modders that we have, we have some outstanding talent. Um, positions can be locked behind titles, although I do not believe we have too many of those for Royal Court, as that's more suited for flavor packs. I get that. Uh, this is a system, and it is a free system, so they can iterate on it themselves, not just mods, but also they can iterate on it. Uh, this is a free system, so this is definitely a system that they are more looking into going forward. Um, it w varies on the position itself, that is, uh, regarding who you can announce. And here we have, I'm also curious how this ties to the DLC lock for mods. I assume the actual code positions will be DLC lock, but will the underlying system be restricted too? Or will it be a free feature, a the, the artifact system, right? The system itself is free with the Royal Code patch, but some positions will be restricted to Royal Code itself. Since we're working, uh, reworking the code position to be a code position, it make little sense, a sense to lock it away behind Royal Code. This also makes similar things more flexible for the future. Yeah, it certainly does. Another question, remodding code positions, is it possible to make the positions inheritable in the same way it is for council positions? Employed court positions are inherited by the player heir, regardless of the player's heir, a player heir's potential employed court positions. Interesting. Okay, and with that, I think this dev diary was a good one. 
nothing that really should knock you off your socks. But I will tell you, uh, at the end of the day, this is definitely one of the features that wasn't in the base game, because d directly porting it from CK2 would have just produced something that is of a low quality that shouldn't be in CK3. Uh, this is the higher quality edition that I was hoping for, and that's what we're getting. Let me know what you think in the comments. For the moment, I would like to thank the members of the channel, namely the Counts, the Barons, and the Dukes. Thank you all so much, and see you later, alligator.